You remember when you failed? No, I do. Here's the thing. It's not your fault. Let me tell you why. I'm Dr. Nate. Welcome to Speed Tribe, where we give you the mental strength tools to run your fastest races and live your best life. Let me tell you about failure. And let me help you understand that I understand failure. By the time I made it to high school, I settled into to running, right? Like growing up, my dad was into running. I remember running in elementary school training. And, and by the time I made it to high school, I fit the bill. I was light, fast, willing to suffer, all of those things. And you know this, you know running, it's all about you. I mean, you run for a team and with a team, but in the end, it's just you. You can't blame anybody else. You can't say it was a bad pass or a missed block. You can't blame the refs. It's running. It's completely and at times almost crushingly on you. Let me tell you about an experience I had early on in high school. There was this race called the Medley Relay. Kind of a weird race. Um, because all the distances in the relay legs were different. There, the first leg was 200 meters, the second leg was 200 meters, then there was a 400 meter lap, and the last anchor leg was 800 meters or two laps. And that's the, that's the leg I ran. And, and basically, since the last leg, the anchor leg, is the longest, uh, whether you win or lose really depends on that anchor leg. And additionally, at the time, it was one of the last races at the meet, so it had a lot of scoring potential. It was a big deal for your school. So early on in my high school career, I had a pretty good season, and I was selected to be an alternate to go to the state championship meet. And as far as I was concerned, it was kind of the best of both worlds. I could get out of school, go on a fun trip, flirt with cute girls at the meet, and not actually have to run or suffer. I was pretty sure I wouldn't have to run because the guy in front of me was exceptionally fast. He, he went on to become a collegiate All-American several times, ran at the Olympic trials. He's very fast and very good, so I wasn't stressing. But then my friend, the guy in front of me, ran the 800 meter race right before the medley relay, and he won the race in this gut-wrenching, lung-gasping sprint to the end, setting a state record in the process. And I went over to congratulate him, but he was so exhausted, he only made it over by the cinder block, that rough gray bathroom wall, right? And he just leaned up against there. Minutes after the race, he's still gasping, just shirt off, sweating, just like sucking in air. And he looks at me and he says, dude, I'm done. You got to race the next race. You'll do great. I tell you though, I didn't feel great. I wasn't mentally prepared for this. I was prepared to do some flirting and cheer on my friend and have fun. I felt like I was going to throw up and the race hadn't even started yet. But I grabbed my spikes. I made it over to the pre-staging area and it's called the, the bullpen in my time, right? And I started to go through my pre-race ritual, listening to some music, staring at the asphalt, shaking out my hamstrings to loosen them up. But so help me in that summer heat, that tented bullpen just smelled like anxiety. Like I, I promise there's an actual smell to the mixture of anticipation and fear of failure and the deep, desperate desire to win. There's actually a scent, man. Now, after we made it out to the track, my relay teammates were all like quoting and singing rap songs to pump themselves up. When the first guy gets in the starting blocks, the rest of us are in the inside of the track waiting for how it goes. And they go, ready, runner, set. And they all pop up and just my, my teammate just runs off, explodes out of the blocks, driving all that coiled energy forward. Uh, he hands off to the next guy in perfect rehearsed fashion. By the time they handed off to the third leg, the 400 meters, they're in the lead. And the 400 meters is just a, one lap. It's a sprint. Uh, so the guy just hits it hard as he can, sprints all the way around the track. It's a painful mess of the race, and he did exquisitely well. When, <laughs> when I received the baton, we are in first place in the lead. Not a big lead, but with a lead. We are in position to become state champions. He passes me the baton. I take off running with everything I had, sprinting for dear life, fueled by sheer panic. 
but the other guys were also running for their lives, juiced up on this idea that this is the state championship, the big stage I got past. Then I got past again and again. And each person that passed me felt like added weight to my shoes. It felt like I was running waist deep through mashed potatoes. I thought I was running as hard as I could, as fast as I could, and it hurt so much. My teammates were screaming and cheering, and each step it just felt like I was letting them down. I, did, I gave everything in the race, but I just felt like I was failing. By the time I, I finished, I had run seconds slower than I had all year. We didn't even place. My coach, kind of a fiery guy, walks up to me, took the baton out of my hand and coldly said, next time you're gonna choke like that, let me know so I can let somebody else run. Right? And turns around and walks off. I don't know if you've ever baked anything before. Have you seen that, that plain baking chocolate? And you think, I like chocolate. I'm gonna take a bite of that cooking chocolate. <laughs> but it doesn't taste like chocolate at all. It's bitter, it's dry, it's hateful. Chocolate should not be hateful. You remember a moment like that? It's real, right? It's what I felt like at that moment. So let me ask you, why does this happen? You train so hard, you want it so bad. No one wants to lose. So why does it happen? You dedicate so much time to it and it just doesn't work. Well, there's two big things going on here. First is fear, and second is a virus, or a lie, if you will. What do I mean by fear? I mean, all of us have deep inside of us this evolutionary instinct to survive. It's planted deep in our brains, in our limbic cortex, the, the most primitive part of our brain. And it's programmed to keep you safe. Um, and it's willing to short circuit your performance in order to keep you safe. That's not your fault. It's just 10,000 years of evolutionary program keeping your ancestors safe from saber toothed tigers, man. It just is. Second, so first is fear. Second is this idea of, of a virus. And what I mean by a virus is not a literal virus, but, but a virus in your brain's programming. And again, not a real virus, but kind of like a computer virus where you have a, a way your computer is supposed to function, but the virus gets in and it starts to mess with how it properly functions. What you have here is you have in your, your neural pathways of your brain, all these connections, you have some, this is where all your skills, all your talents, all your performance, all your thoughts are stored in these neurological connections here. And so along the way through genetics and experiences, you've developed some neural pathways that aren't helpful to you. There, there's a lie in your programming up in your head. There, there's a virus there. And, and the, the, this programmatic lie is leading to your diminished performance. That's not your fault. It's just there. So are you just hosed? No. Here's the thing. Cutting edge neuroscience lets us, know, lets us know that you can rewire your brain. Like you can get better, you can get faster, you can race better. I'm telling you, it's absolute fact. It's proven, it's scientific, it's right there. It's, it's a huge, you'll be able to do it. It's not your fault that you've fallen short. It's okay, you're okay. But if you want a way out, if you want to reach your potential, if you want to win, because let's be real, winning is much more fun than losing. If you want the best possible life, follow us here at Speed Tribe. Let us know. We'll lead you step by step on how you can rewire your brain, remove some of those viruses, and live up to your best potential. I hope you live the good life. Sound good? All right. See you next time.